Namaste everyone. This is Shobha Rao here. I am a lawyer by qualification and a soft skills corporate trainer by passion. My training company is called Smile Makers and we have a vision to live in a world where everyone has the ability to find smiles and make smiles whatever their situation. I have traveled around the world and I've lived in different places in India and finally I have come to stay 2 years ago to my native place Mangalore. I realized that a lot of people do not know much about Mangalore. So this is my humble attempt to inform you and inspire you about a wonderful city Mangalore which will surely give you memorable experiences. Welcome to memorable Mangalore. A unique city that can be referred to by nine different names in nine in different local languages. The Sanskrit scriptures call this ancient place as Manjarun. It is mentioned as Maganur in the records of European traders of the 1st century. The Arab traders whose local descendants speak the Bihari language refer to this place as Maikala. It is affectionately called Mangaluru in Kannada language. Kodial in Konkani, Kudla in Tulu language, Mangalapuram in Malayalam, and Kodiala in the Haivaka local language. Mangalore is well connected to the rest of the world by all means of transport. If you come by plane, watch with bated breath how the pilot expertly lands the plane at the airport, which is situated on the rare tabletop runway. high above the bachpe hill if you are taking a road trip towards manglo you can admire the raw natural beauty of the region the hairpin bend roads of the western ghats the thick forest coverage on the rolling hills the bright green paddy fields the streams the waterfalls the coconut and the palm trees the arecna the cashew the rubber plantations and much more you can admire This amazing natural scenery even during your train rides to Mangalore especially by this open air vista dome coach that has just started you can be fascinated by the old world charm of the Mangalore railway station or you can also be a part of the huge international cruise ships that dock at sea off the Mangalore port you can admire the old and the modern structures of Mangalore on the serene boat ride across the river so mangalore has a unique honor of being surrounded by hills the river and the sea we have the western ghats on one side the gurpur and the netravati rivers in the middle and also the arabian sea on the other side you have a choice of visiting beach resorts river view resorts or valley view resorts all in close proximity to each other the city center is called hampana katta which literally means the race platform from where a local man appana used to welcome weary travelers with water and jaggery from an ancient well and this was recently re-excavated during a road repair project this is the crowded commercial center of mangalore There are many old and new buildings next to each other like the town hall the nehru grounds the clock tower the government corporation and public utility offices malls hospitals education institutions shopping and office complexes it is a cradle of banking with five nationalized banks having originated from this district mangaloreans have a great advantage of having access to excellent educational and medical care facilities which is so important in recent times Mangalore has some of the m- most amazing beaches like Tanirbavi or Panambur beach and many more across the co- coastline which are less crowded you can frolic in the clean waters and enjoy boat rides and many adventure and entertainment activities of the beaches Manglo has a history of being ruled by local dynasties like the Alupas or Nayakas or Chautas and other minor chieftains. Up to the 15th century, this Tulu Nadu region was part of the Vijayanagar kingdom. 
Later, the Portuguese arrived, initially as traders, and then they became the rulers of the coast. Few history books have made any mention about Rani Abaka from Mangalore. This brave Chauta queen had organized repeated guerrilla-like warfare against the Portuguese rule across four decades. Her statue at Ullal stands in honor of her being the first female Indian freedom fighter against foreign rule. Many battles were fought to recapture Mangalore, which became an important naval base. The only remnant of the Mangalore fort now is the watchtower called Sultan Bateri that was constructed by Tipu Sultan to store artillery and provide a strategic view of the Manglo harbour. Initially, Manglo was a part of the Madras Presidency and after the freedom movement, it was unified with the Mysore state. It is now the headquarters of the South Kendra district and is also a part of the smart city mission of Karnataka. Religious tourism is a big attraction in Manglo where festivals are celebrated with great devotion, pomp and glory. Mythological history tells about this Tulunadu coastal region that was originally reclaimed from the sea by Lord Parashurama. A shrine dedicated to him along with other gods is present at the sprawling Khadri temple complex where he had prayed to Lord Shiva. The idol of Lord Manjunateshwara is very, very ancient over here. This must be the only temple where the water tanks are situated at a higher level than the main shrine. Since this was initially a forest land inhabited by serpents, snake worship is an important expression among Bangalore devotees. There are many Nagabanas or serpents carved in stone placed under holy trees and dedicated Powerful snake temples like Kurupu or Kukke Subramanya are famous for the wish fulfilling of the devotees. It is an unforgettable experience to witness special snake worship ceremonies like Nagamandalas, where the main characters get possessed by the serpent spirit and wriggle gracefully for hours like serpents around elaborate Rangoli snake representations. Mangalore region has many small or big temples in almost every nook and corner that draw hordes of devotees like the Sharavu Ganesha temple or the Shore temple of Someshwar and many more. The features of a typical Mangalorean style temple is very different from a North Indian style temple. There is usually a periphery wall and a courtyard, the devotional pathway, the light pole, the flagpole, the sacrificial stones, the balustrades, the idols all under the main gopuram with the kalasha. The temple idols are carried in palaquins or chariots are called rathas during festive days to the accompaniments of musical instruments, devotional singing and other local entertainment. Many outsiders do not know much about the grand Navaratri celebrations in Mangalo city. Day and night long processions are taken out on the final days across the city from Gokarnateshwara temple at Kudroli or Venkateshwara temple at Ka Street or Mangaladevi temple at Bolar from where the city got its name. The colorful sights and sounds of festive street lights, the numerous tableaus, the live musical instruments, the energetic dancing by people and the body painted by the tigers, the fireworks, the locals in different costumes accompanied by the devotion of the crowds makes Manglo Dasara processions a unique, unforgettable experience long after the Devi idols finally get immersed in the many ancient tanks around Mangalore. Mangalore has been the fine example of different communities living in harmony since centuries. Do you know that the world famous uniquely fragrant jasmine flowers are sold out of the temples by mainly Christians? The rose ceremony before Christian weddings or the new harvest procession ceremony 
during Mother Mary's feast has rituals which are quite similar to Hindu culture. Some Christian families of Mangalore have retained their original Hindu surnames like Globa Prabhu or Saldana Shet or Vasnayak even after their conversions so many generations ago. Mangalore has amazing churches too like Rosario or Milagros Church. The museums and the fresco paintings covering the interior of the Aloysius Chapel by the Jesuits are a stunning visual delight. The Basel mission had started the first printing press in the region. The missionaries have contributed in many ways to the Mangalore's growth in the field of education or industry, like tile making or coffee curing or homeopathy. The people of Mangalore are generally of good nature. They keep the city clean and they do not encourage beggars. The famous Kadri Park of Mangalore is worth a visit. Another attraction is the Pilikula Nisargadama complex, where you can spend time as a tourist in the gardens, in the lakes, the planetarium, the science center. But do visit the artisan's village that keeps alive old skills of craftsmen to produce locally made stuff like handloom products, carpentry items, bamboo items, pottery items, blacksmith items, stone sculptures. Another must visit is the Guttu Mane, a replica of the original community homes of the Bunts. You will get an idea of the traditional household items that were used in Mangalore, where living in joint families was a common practice. A walk around the quiet by-lanes of Mangalore will give you an opportunity to see how modern apartments and ancient homes exist happily next to each other. Yes, eating delicious food is another enthusiastic pursuit of Mangaloreans. Whether you are a vegetarian or non-vegetarian, the variety and the unique style of Mangalorean cooking will simply amaze you. A variety of unique rice-based items dominate the breakfast scene in local hotels, serving items like mude, kottige, cucumber idli, pundi, neyappa, shavige, neer dosa, sajjige bajil, curds powa, patrode, jackfruit katti, apam and much more. The three-layered colored car tea or co filter coffee is a treat to watch and drink. If you are adventurous enough, then do try the mid-morning fresh local toddy at an unnamed shack on the highway. Or you can go to the swanky toddy bars that have opened in Mangalore. The non-vegetarians can indulge in a variety of meals like fish curry and boiled rice, shellfish, marwai sukka, kane fish fry, dried fish or prawn chutney, Kori roti with chicken ghee roast, pork kurwal and many many more. Even vegetarians can be thrilled with a simple thali meal in Brahmin or Konkani style cooking of rice, vegetables, rasam, sambar, gassi and local sweets like kashi halwa, ragi manni or paisam. Visiting the ideal ice cream parlour is definitely on your to-do list. You can indulge your sweet truth with your signature gadbar ice cream and paan ice cream and many more varieties. Mangaloreans also enjoy the evening snacks with options like goli bajje, banana podi, biscuit roti, Mangalore buns and much more. There will be some or the other local events happening on the weekends or you can just chill out at night at one of the many clubs of Mangalore. Mangaloreans have strongly retained their unique customs, rituals and culture of their communities. They view or participate with full enthusiasm in the ancient sport called Kambala, where buffalo races take place on muddy tracks. Cockfights are also organized with enthusiastic supporters cheering on all sides. Old board games like Chandimane are still found in Bangalore homes. And people stay up all night to watch the local folk art performances called Yakshagana, which is a rare combination of song, dance, drama, impromptu dialogue with messages 
and elaborate costumes. Even admiring the performers put on the extensive makeup by themselves is a memorable experience. The original inhabitants of the forest lands of Mangalore belong to communities like the Mogavira fishermen, the Bunt warriors, the Billawa hunters, the Jain administrators, the Koraka tribal workers and more. They still follow the unique worship rituals associated with appeasement of local spirits called Bhutakola. During these celebrations, an impersonator dresses up in elaborate costumes like palm leaf skirts with loud makeup and masks and anklets. He accepts ceremonious offerings and lighted torches, trembles with spectacular or bizarre dance steps. He invokes the spirits up to a state of frenzy along with the accompaniment of traditional music and songs called Pardanas. These are stories of local folk heroes or spirit which are sung across generations by the ladies of the village. This is an all-night affair where the possessed impersonator answers the questions and settles quarrels. A firecracker show is generally put up by a member of the Muslim family which is a constant demonstration of years of communal harmony among Mangalorians. The Biardis are one of the earliest Muslim communities of Mangalore and the first century Juma Masjid at Bandar is considered as one of the oldest mosques of the country. The Biardi ladies are usually seen wearing chunky jewellery and the men are usually traders of seafood items, timber or spices. They have distinct customs regarding lifestyle or marriage, demonstrating a blend of both Arab and Tulu cultures. The locals start their day early to manage the hot and the humid weather of Mangalore. You can see the bustling fishing activity at the port at dawn, or enjoy the sights and smells of the central market or the flower market. You can shop here for local specialities like copper or brass items, worship items, local sweets like dinky dry fruit laddu, wheat halwa, jackfruit or mango items, local savouries, palm jaggery, spices, pickles, masalas, kori ratti or saris, jewellery and much more. You can go for a detox program to rejuvenate your body, mind and soul at one of the many naturopathy or Ayurvedic clinics around Mangalore. You can make numerous day trips around Mangalore to admire nature like trekking to places like Didupu waterfalls or Jamalabad fort. You can know interesting facts about local culture at the Thulu Museum in Bantwal. You can enjoy beach adventure sports along the vast coastline like snorkeling or scuba diving at Kapu Beach. Do visit holy ancient temples of Polali, Katil, Dharmasthala and many more. You can visit Jain Basadis and huge Gubateshwara statues at Kalkala. The list is endless. Thank you so much for listening to this information about our beloved native place Mangalore. We look forward to welcoming you to our city that has the best of both worlds, ancient culture as well as modern amenities. Do visit a unique Manglo and create a lifetime of memories. Thank you.